fellow Nigerians. It's a pleasure. Sorry for interrupting you. Eh? Before you start, we know so you go talk about Nigeria being patient, that you understand the suffering that we are going through, that you have the best thing, that Nigeria economy is growing, and that this and that. We know so much that you are going to talk about. We have said it before, but please, I believe what we want here, me being a common Nigeria, is that eh, you go talk about the fuel price and the is immediate reduction and the step you are taking. We know you are taking the step, but please still tell all the kind of step you are taking so that we will get hope. Please. Well, let's let our president talk. As I address you today, I am deeply aware of the struggles many of you face in these challenging times. Our administration knows that many of you struggle with rising costs and the search for meaningful employment. I want to assure you that your voices are hard. As your president, I assure you that we are committed to finding sustainable solutions to alleviate the suffering of our citizens. Once again, I plead for your patience as the reforms we are implementing show positive signs and we are beginning to see the light at the end of the tunnel. Exactly 64 years ago, our founding fathers chose democracy as a form of government and launched the dream of a great country that will lead the rest of Africa out of poverty, ignorance, and underdevelopment, a beacon of hope for the rest of Africa and the world. Over six decades later, we can look back and Nigerians worldwide can see how well we have succeeded in realizing the lofty dream of our founding fathers. I am sorry for interrupting this video. I don't think Nigeria have succeeded, honestly speaking. I don't think so. I don't think we have succeeded in actualizing the Nigeria of our founding fathers. I don't think so. Or maybe this is what our founding fathers want. This is what our founding father wants. No free education. I don't think, well, except if this is what our founding father wants. Are we proud of where we are? No, let's be honest now. Hmm? These are the reality. Can I beat my chest and say, yes, I'm a Nigerian? Uh, Nigeria is great, but the people in Nigeria, I don't understand them. But, but I don't think we have actualized the dreams of our founding fathers. The world is witnessing and benefiting from the can-do spirit of Nigerian people, our massive intellectual capacity, and our enterprise and industry in all vocations, from art to science, technology to infrastructure. The dreams that our founding fathers envisaged are still work in progress. Every day, we put our hand on the plow, determined to do a better job of it. Why it is tempting to focus on what has been left undone and where we have stumbled as a nation. We must never lose sight of how far we have come in forging and holding our country together. Since independence, our nation has survived many crises and upheavals that led to the dissolution and disintegration of many other nations worldwide. Six years after independence, our country descended into a political crisis that led to a bitter and avoidable civil war. 
since returning from the brink of that darkest moment, we have learned to embrace our diversity and manage our differences better as we continue to work towards engendering a more perfect union. Despite the many challenges that buffeted our country, we remain a strong, united, and viable sovereign nation. Dear compatriot, our independent anniversary gave us another chance to reflect on how far we have gone in our journey to nation building and to renew our commitment to building a better nation that we deserve present and future generations of Nigerians. While we celebrate the progress we have made as people in the last 64 years, we must also recognize some of our missed opportunities and mistakes of the past if we are to become one of the greatest nations on earth as God has destined us to be. Our mistake must not be follow into the future. My administration took over leadership of our country 16 months ago at a critical juncture. The economy faced many headwinds and our physical security highly impaired. We found ourselves at a decent crossroad where we must choose between two paths, reform for progress and prosperity, or carry on the business as usual and collapse. We decided to reform our political economy and defense architecture. On the security front, I am happy to announce to you, my compatriots, that our administration is winning the war on terror and banditry. Our target is to eliminate all threats of Boko Haram, banditry, kidnapping for ransom, and the scourge of all forms of violent extremism. Within one year, our government has eliminated many Boko Haram and bandit commanders faster than ever. As of the last count, over 300 Boko Haram and bandit commanders have been eliminated by our gallant troops in the northeast, northwest, and some other part of the country. We have restored peace to hundreds of communities in the north and thousands of our people have been able to return home. It is an unfinished business, I agree, which our security agencies are committed to ending as quickly as possible. As soon as we can restore peace to many communities in the troubled part of the north, our farmers can return to their farms. We expect to see a leap in food production and a downward spiral in food costs. I promise you, we shall not falter on this. Our government has been responding to the recent natural disasters, particularly the flooding in the part of the country. After Vice President Kashim Shetima visited Maduguri, I also visited to assure our people that this federal government will always stand with our people in their times of trouble. At the last meeting of the Federal Executive Council, we approved a disaster relief fund to mobilize private and public sector funds to help us respond faster to emergencies. Our government has also ordered the integrity test of our dams in the country to avert future disasters. The economy is undergoing the necessary reforms 
and retooling to serve us better and more sustainably. If we do not correct the physical misalignment that led to the current economic downturn, our country will face an uncertain future and the peril of unimaginable consequences. Thanks to the reform, our country attracted foreign direct investment worth more than $30 billion in the last year. Fellow compatriots, our administration is committed to free enterprises, free entry, and free exit in investment while maintaining the sanctity and efficacy of our regulatory processes. This principle guides the divestment transaction in our upstream sector while we are committed to changing the fortune positively. As such, Exxon Mobil surplus divestment will receive ministry approval in a matter of days, having been concluded by the regulator, NUPRC, in line with the Petroleum Industry Act, PIA. This was done in the same manner as other qualified divestment approved in the sector. The move will create vibrancy and increase oil and gas production positively, impacting our economy. The more disciplined approach adopted by the central bank to monetary policy management has ensured stability and predictability in our foreign exchange market. We inherited a reserve of over 33 billion 16 months ago. Since then, we have paid back the inherited forex backlog of 7 billion. We have cleared the ways and means debt of over 30 trillion naira. We have reduced the debt service ratio from 97% to 68%. Despite all this, we have managed to keep our foreign reserve at 37 billion. We continue to meet all our obligations and pay our bills. We are moving ahead with our physical policy reforms. We stimulate our productive capacity and create more jobs and prosperity. The Federal Executive Council approved the Economic Stabilization Bill, which will now be transmitted to the National Assembly. This transformative bill will make our business environment more friendly, stimulate investment, and reduce the tax burden on businesses and workers who own their affairs into law. As part of our efforts to re-engineer our political economy, we are resolute in our determination to implement the Supreme Court judgment on the financial autonomy of local governments. The central concern of our people today is the high cost of living, especially food costs. This concern is shared by many around the globe as prices and the cost of living continue to rise worldwide. My fellow Nigerians, please be assured that we are implementing many measures to reduce the cost of living at home. I commend the governors particularly in Kebi, Niger, Jigawa, Kwara, Nasarawa, and other Southwest governors that have embraced our agricultural production program. I urge other states to join the federal government in investing in mechanized farming. We are playing our part 
by supplying fertilizer and making tractors and other farm equipment available. Last week, the Federal Executive Council approved establishing a local assembly plant for 2,000 John Deere tractors, combined harvesters, disc riders, mountain plows, and other farm equipment. The plant has a completion time of six months. Our energy transition program is on course. We are expanding the adoption of the presidential initiative on compressed natural gas for mass transit with private sector players. The federal government is ready to assist the 36 states and FCT in acquiring CNG buses for cheaper public transportation. Fellow Nigerians, while we are working to stabilize the economy and secure the country, we also seek to foster national unity and build social harmony and coercion. Our economy can only thrive when there is peace. As we work to overcome the challenges of the day, we remain mindful of next generation as we we seek to galvanize their creative energy towards a better future. We lead today with the future we wish to bequeath to our children in focus. Recognizing that we cannot design a future that belongs to them without making them its architects. Considering this, I am pleased to announce the gathering of a national Youth Conference. This conference will be a platform to address the diverse challenges and opportunities confronting our young people, who constitute more than 60% of our population. It, is, it will provoke meaningful dialogue and empower our young people to participate actively in nation building by ensuring that their voices are hard in shaping the policies that impact their lives. We are creating a pathway for a brighter tomorrow. The 30 day comfort will unite young people nationwide to collaboratively develop solutions to issues such as education, employment, innovation, security, and social justice. The modality of this confab and selection of delegates will be designed in close consultation with our young people through their representatives. Through this confab, it will be our job as leaders to ensure that their aspirations are at the heart of the conference deliberations. The government will thoroughly consider and implement the recommendations and outcomes from this forum as we remain resolute in our mission to build a more inclusive, prosperous, and united Nigeria. Our government is implementing several other youth-centric programs good to give our young people an advantage in rapid changing world. We are implementing, among others, the three million technical program of the Ministry of Communications, Innovation and Digital Economy, aimed at building Nigerian technical talent backbone. We have also and to enthusiastically implemented the Nigerian Education Loan Fund, NEL Fund, which provides cheap loans to our students to pursue their tertiary educational dream. In addition, later this month, we shall launch the Renewal Hope Labor Employment and Empowerment, the LEAP, 
it is conceived as a comprehensive suite of interventions and job creation by Federal Ministry of Labor and Employment that is aimed at facilitating the creation of 2.5 million jobs directly and indirectly on an annual incremental basis while simultaneously ensuring the welfare and safety of workers across the country, as is the tradition. The government will soon announce all the beneficiaries of our national honors for 2024. The Senate President and the Chief Justice of the Federation have been conferred with the honor of the Grand Commander of the Order of the Niger, G-C-O-N. The Deputy Senate President and the Speaker of the House of Representatives have honor of Commander of the Order of the Federal Republic, CFR. While the Deputy Speaker of the House has been awarded Commander of the Order of Niger, C-O-N. Fellow Nigerians, better days are ahead of us. The challenge of the moment must always make us believe in ourselves. We are Nigerians, resilient and tenacious. We always prevail and rise above our circumstances. I urge you to believe in our nation's promise. The road ahead may be challenging, but we will forge a path towards a brighter future with your support. Together, we will cultivate a Nigeria that reflects the aspiration of all its citizens, a nation that resonates with pride, dignity, and shared success. As agents of change, we can shape our destiny and build a brighter future by ourselves, for ourselves, and future generations. Please join us and join our administration in this journey towards a brighter future. Let us work together to build a greater Nigeria where every citizen can access opportunities and every child can grow up with hope and promise. May God continue to bless our nation and keep members of our armed forces safe. Happy Independence Anniversary, fellow Nigerians. <laughs>